Hey guys, Adam from adamenfroy.com here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the content assembly line and how this entire process works to scale your content marketing effort and get more traffic and less time. So let's get right into it. So when I think about an assembly line, it's classic, right? It's a Henry Ford creation back with the Model T and creating motor vehicles and cars, right? More Instead of you know creating every little part as an individual person or a team, it's an assembly line. Different people focus on different parts and it continuously moves along in a track, right? It's a faster and more efficient way of doing business. It's been around for over 100 years. And the same principles, though, still apply when it comes to blogging. So the end goal with creating content is to make money, right? So we have to kind of backtrack. To make money, we have to rank on Google, typically on page one. To rank on page one, we have to write really good content that's optimized and also get links to it, do these other things, create optimized content. So when we think of it in assembly line, there's different stages to this to do it faster. Remember, you're a business owner, not a writer. And I like this because monetized posts, it's not writing content, it's assembling content. There's a clear formula that we can go after. So the first step is minimum viable posts. So we talk about minimum viable posts as being good enough move on. We don't need to be Shakespeare here or Ernest Hemingway and write the perfect blog post before we publish it, fearing what other people might think. The truth is you publish an article, an informational article on Google, no one's going to read it for a while. It's not going to rank. So if we look at the exact formula, let's cover it, the, what I call the content ranking system. So there's multiple things that you have to do. So Thinking in the backtracking way, we need to get to page one of Google and we need to monetize the post with affiliate links, right? So to get there, there's a clear ranking system and here's how it works. So here's exactly how I do it. Basically, I do keyword research myself because you can't really outsource the strategy of your blog. You don't wanna do that and it doesn't take all that long. So I do keyword research and I identify a, a target keyword that I wanna go after with a blog post. Then what I do is I provide that information to an outsourced writer. Now, if you don't have an outsourced writer, you can still do this part. You're, you can do this part yourself. Um, providing that information in an outline form to a writer um, so that they have the information that they need to assemble this article. Then get the article back in a Google Doc. So it's a completed first draft, right? It's you know, we're not writing everything from scratch. This whole thing is about scaling and, you know, making money quickly. So it might take 10 hours to write a blog post. What if you could get somebody else to do the first draft for you? Or even if you're writing it yourself with the assembly mindset, it's not going to take that long. Get the Google Doc, right? Get that Google Doc, convert it into WordPress with a WordPress converter tool. We'll give you the exact steps in the course. Um, it's in WordPress. There's a few tweaks you have to do. They'll show you you know, different little things to add, add a featured images, make sure the URL where the post living is in there, add a meta description, um, check the links, you know, all that stuff. So there's little details, but then it's published. It's published. It's a minimum viable article. It's not perfect. It's not written in an amazing way. It's not like the best article anyone's ever written, but it doesn't have to be at this point. It just has to be optimized for search engines. So if this article is promising, based on your knowledge graph and Google, what Google thinks of you, they're gonna give you an initial ranking. That could be anywhere from page two all the way to page 20 or whatever it is, right? Sometimes I'll publish something and I'm like, oh, I'm on page nine. Well, that's not gonna happen, right? That's probably gonna take forever to rank. Or I might start an article and I'm like, oh, I've started showing up on page two or three earlier. So it's data-driven again, right? So we have to know that stuff. Then, all right, article is published. It's not perfect, but it's out there published, Google can index it. That's key. Now, if it can be monetized and make you money, it's that's when you start building links to it and the link building machine that we're going to cover as well. So then you start building links to it, to that individual article. Because remember, you're building links to your blog as a whole, but you also need building links to specific articles to build up that URL rating to compete with other articles. That initially boosts the article to an acceptable level on page two, or you know maybe you're getting to the bottom of page one. This is then when you come back in the content assembly line and finally update this for human beings, right? You're writing better intros, uh, more sales-driven copy, match, you know, optimizing the search intent, 
getting it to that final status. But it doesn't make sense to put it into that final status so early on when you're not even sure if it's going to rank, right? You could make this perfect article and then it's ranking on page eight and no one ever finds it. Why not do the MVP version, get it good enough for search engines using SEO tools, right? Get links to it, see if it's viable and it's going to rank and then update it. So it's a whole mindset shift in an assembly line format. It's good enough, move on. It's hitting the bar. It's not creating some amazing post at first because again, blog posts can always be updated. So finally, you're updating it for human beings. And remember, monetization is a byproduct of ranking. Like if I wasn't ranking on page one for certain terms on Google, I wouldn't be making affiliate marketing revenue. And ranking on page one is a byproduct of the content assembly line and the link building machine, as we say. So let's get into some examples here. So when I'm looking at, um, let's say we want to, you know, we have a target keyword in mind and we want, to, we want to outsource this to a writer or get an outline going so we can kind of conceptualize this. Well, in my blogging course, I'm going to give you specific templates for different types of posts. Roundup posts, like, you know, category list posts, review posts, other types of posts that you're going to need. So you know exactly how to assemble content. So let's just take a look at like a, a small example of a roundup post template. So you can create an, you know, a content outline for a writer and you can get as uh, specific or as you know, vague as you want. So like when I first started my blog and I was publishing articles on making money online and doing all these different things, I was probably too vague when I gave information to my writer. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing exactly. I'd give them like the word count and the target keyword and I'd give them some other stuff and the format, but I could have gave them more information. So. When you're first working with a writer, it's important to provide them over, over provide information at first. Once they understand your format and they're comfortable with it, then it can be as simple as like, here's five lines of text, length, target keyword, you know, here's the format, go for it. But when you're first starting, you really want to hone in on some certain things and give a writer or yourself all the information you need. So you can see like article notes for writers. So X word article, you can do competitor research and see like, I want a 2000, need a 2000 word article. And the target keyword is, enter that target keyword, and it should be used, you know, a certain number of times. Now, there's different SEO tools you can use that I'll go, on, go over in different videos, like Surfer SEO, that tell you, like, how many times certain keywords should be used. And that's going to be a big component of this first part of the content assembly line. You can share SEO reports with writers that they can implement in Google Docs and get all of the semantic keywords and all of the formatting correct so that the post is already perfect from a search engine robotic standpoint before you even publish it, right? So you can give clear direction. Like I want a surfer SEO score of at least 85 or something. I want a Grammarly score of 99. So you can use these tools to your advantage so that when you're getting posts initially, they're already in an optimized state. They may not be perfectly written for people, but they're going to be good enough to start showing up on search engines. So then you're going to write, you know, how many times you want the keyword used, target audience. You can fill that in if you want. Again, this is a little bit, a lot of information um, that's good for a new writer. You can write about your tone. So you want it to be conversational, clear, professional. Uh, yeah, this is very common with writing, like writers. A lot of writers charge per word. So it's like zero fluffy language. Stop adding random commas and random long sentences in if you don't have to. Then you can add internal links. So please internally link to these articles, right? That's a little bit more advanced for a new writer. They might struggle with like how to do that effectively, but you can add that as well. Zero filler and fluff words. So then you can say, once you have one perfect article, and again, this uh, in my course, I teach exactly how to outsource this and scale this, but I do think it's really important when you're first starting a blog to write some articles yourself doing this format so that you can outsource it. It's hard to outsource before you know how to do it yourself. So getting that practice runs in to know good writing, using Grammarly in these tools to get it good, then you can do this stuff. So that gets then it gets into kind of the heart of the article. So here's the title. And what's really cool is there's a, Moz has a title tag generator. If you go to moz.com slash learn slash SEO slash title dash tag, you'll find the title tag. So I'm going to use like one of my posts as an example, but let's just say, let's look at this. It might be too long. Let's see. So this, you know, any title needs to be it has a certain width. You don't want to overdo it or it's going to get cut off. So you'll see like this fits, right? So you can, I have that and it's like, if I added something like ranked, compared and reviewed, 
it would probably be too long, right? And it would say, okay, now it's cut off. So you can see what it'll look like on search engines because there's a certain length that it has to be, typically 60 characters or less. Now the optimized format of a title is odd number plus a superlative or a, you know, action word like, or, you know, a adjective like best if that's in the keyword, then your target keyword here. And then this is all what I call search intent trigger words. So getting more clicks, cl optimizing your click through rate. But you can use this Moz tool to like it makes at least make sure the title is good. So I can say like, okay, the title is seven best screen sharing software 2021. Give them something. You don't have to do that because you can always change that later. But now it gets into the heart of the content assembly line. Like we're creating assembling content. When writers write stuff for you, or when you're first starting writing, it's way easier to assemble simple articles than like have a blank page and be unsure what to do. So intro, 75 to 100 word hooks that draws readers in. Then it gets into the H2s. What are the best, exactly how to do it? So like this example here, first sentence talking about this company or this product, make sure it covers the unique value propositions. Here's exactly how to do it in order. All of these things, right? So you give this stuff to your writer. They can create really good content. And you might have to, you know, I've had to do it a lot of times where it's like constructive criticism and feedback over time really helps. Like maybe, you know, you outsource it, you find it. We'll cover, you know, this is covered in the course as well, like exactly how to find good writers, where to do it, how, how to pay them and what, what is fair and all of that and how to work with them, how to manage a content calendar. But in the content assembly line, you give them information. They come back and give you a post, right? So this post, like I got one on screen sharing software. Now, oftentimes in the past, I didn't, you know, I've gotten it to where like, oh, the writing wasn't that great. I've, I've you know, doing intros myself and I've really had to edit a lot. And, but the more you work with individual writers on a one-to-one -one basis, like the better they'll get over time. So here's, the, here's all this stuff in that format. And then here's the final post. So again, I'll give you the exact headings to use, headings and subheadings that Google is looking for. Because it's not just paragraph text and like a big article with text, it's also headings, the structure, mastering search intent, where to add the headings to match the search intent and to make Google's life easier so that you can get pulled into those featured snippets more often and get more traffic. So then you have it and it's published, right? It's like, okay, now it lives on this screen sharing software.com. It's here. Now over time, what I can do is like start getting links to this post. So again, when you're doing link building, you only have a certain amount of time on your hands and a certain number of link volume, right? So you don't want to go, you know, always send like, oh, I now send 100 links to this one article. So again, in the course we're covering, how do you test link building? Like, how do you start linking to certain articles to see which ones are going to work and which ones aren't? Like, I wasted a lot of links on my web hosting post because I, it was way too competitive. How I could have done better with, you know, other, other posts and sent links to other ones that were making money faster. But when you're thinking about the content assembly line, it isn't, starting from an article, you know, writing this full article and publishing it, and then writing another article and publishing it, hoping to get links, hoping to do these things. It's a very different startup based MVP process. SEO optimized posts with tools with an outline publish, right? Wait, build links, check the viability, base it on data and decisions. That's what we're going to teach in this course. That's how you literally make money blogging is finding opportunities, honing in on these sub niches. That's why, again, the small niche site formula does not work anymore. It's because we need to find different avenues and paths that work to hone in on what works. So based on data, based on seeing, okay, I published this article, I'm seeing some impressions in search console more than others. And I'm saying, all right, I'm ranking on like page two or three for this promising early signs start putting some link building efforts to it. No link, you know, is really, the value is never really lost because it's building your, your website's DR overall as an asset, but there's ways that you can really plan where you're putting the links, plan the content strategy, plan your keyword research. So it's publish links, update for human beings. We'll cover exactly how to match search intent, how to, you know, uh, think about it from a user experience standpoint, getting people to engage, not bounce you know, visit other pages on your website, help you rank on search engines, and then eventually obviously monetize these posts with affiliate links. But that's it for now for the content assembly line. So this isn't, you know, this isn't just writing articles. This is assembling articles. This is, this entire process, the entire like course 
is to make money blogging as fast as possible. That's why this assembly line exists, right? We could spend 10 hours writing an individual article and then it never ranks. Or we could spend 30 minutes testing, tweaking, optimizing sub niche articles and like certain ones work and certain ones make a lot of money. So it's a time management process. It increases the odds of success exponentially. And that is how the content assembly line works in a nutshell. So in the course, we cover a ton more. Uh, if you haven't joined the VIP list, please do. I hope you found this content helpful. You know, when you think about blogging, it's just so different in 2021 than it used to be. The same influencers and people that are ranking for these terms on how to start a blog and how to write, you know, and they're talking about it are getting lazy because they started 10 years ago, right? They started in 2010. They're writing the same content. They don't know a lot of these intricate details that I'm covering in the course and my VIP list. So if you want to build a successful blogging business based on the personal brand of you in the 2020s, you know, we're not the old bloggers that started when it was easier. We're the next generation of bloggers starting today from zero. The same rules do not apply that they're teaching. The content assembly line, link building machine, these are new things that you really need to focus on when starting your blog. So I hope you found that helpful. Please join the VIP list if you have it, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.